Support Name Explain on Patreon for ad-free videos, exclusive podcasts and blog posts, and to help choose what names get explained. Click the link in the description. It's that time of year again, when we all go creature crazy and shine a spotlight on some of history's most infamous monsters. You know the classics, Dracula, the werewolf, the mummy, Thatcher, Cthulhu, and of course, Frankenstein. However, it's at that point that someone usually butts in and goes, actually the monster wasn't called Frankenstein, that was the name of the scientist, which is all well and good. However, what if I was to tell you that actually the monster is called Frankenstein? Mary Shelley's 1818 novel Frankenstein is one of my personal favourite books, so I'm so excited to finally be able to talk about it. This is a video I've wanted to make for some time, and forgive me if I go a little too GCSE English literature with this one. Don't be surprised to see spark notes in the sources for this video. Though before I gosh on about the meanings, themes and motives of this book, let me explain that name of Frankenstein, because it existed before the novel and carries on as a surname to this day. In fact, one source claims that there are around 1,700 people on our planet still with the surname Frankenstein, and most of these real living Frankensteins are in Germany, so it's no surprise to hear that this name is of German origin. It's thought to be a habitual surname meaning Stone of the Franks, possibly a reference to the mountains in the Franconia region of Germany. It is said that Shelley used the name herself because it came to her in a dream, along with most of the story itself. And to get to the bottom of as to why we can call the monster Frankenstein, we really need to understand Shelley's original monster and book. Despite the popular image of the monster we all have, he wasn't anything like that in the book. No green skin, no flat head, and definitely no neck bolts. Victor described his creation in the book by saying that his limbs were in proportion, I selected his features as beautiful. His yellow skin scarcely covered the work on muscles and arteries beneath. His hair was of a luscious black and flowing, his teeth of a pearly whiteness, but these luxuriances only formed a more horrid contrast with his watery eyes that seemed almost the same colour as the dun white sockets in which they were set, his shriveled complexion and straight black lips. So he's actually described as having handsome features, which makes sense as Victor wanted to make the perfect specimen. Yet these attractive qualities are made worse by his monstrous features like his black lips, yellow skin, and watery eyes. And Shelley's monster wasn't only physically different either. The popular idea we have of the creature is that he is slow moving, of low intelligence, and talks in a slow, uneducated manner. However, in the book, he becomes eloquent, educated, and can talk in full sentences, and even read and write. This definitely isn't the Boris Karloff style monster we all know today that is synonymous with the name Frankenstein. Another big difference between the 1931 Boris Karloff film and the book is the Doctor's view on the monster. In the film, to start with, the Doctor tries to be friendly to his creation, trying to teach the monster to walk and talk. However, in the book, the Doctor immediately rejects his creation. However, somewhere the original book and popular idea do match up is with the name of the creature or lack thereof. As like any know-it-all enjoys to point out, in the book the creature has no name. But that doesn't mean he isn't called anything at all in the book. He does get called things, many, usually negative, terms are applied to the monster. Words such as ogre, devil, thing, creature, demon, fiend, and wretch, just to name a few, are all applied to the monster. The monster calls himself the Adam of your labours when confronting his creator. This is of course a reference to Adam and Eve, the first human in Abrahamic religions, and from this in other medias the creature has been given the first name of Adam too. In one 1823 play of the novel, the monster was credited with just two N dashes, which apparently Mary Shelley was fond of, so that could be seen as the name officially endorsed by the author. So if the book itself never officially called the monster Frankenstein, and neither did any of the adaptation of the novel, then why did the creature become known simply as Frankenstein? Well, we aren't exactly sure. The book is over 200 years old now, and it seems the name was applied to the creature slowly over time. One idea I found theorised that was thanks to the 1931 Boris Karloff-led film. The posters for the film say in large print Frankenstein, and primarily feature the creature. Perhaps people not familiar with the source material just presumed that the name Frankenstein applied to the monster on the poster. Like how many other monster movies of the time were named after the main monster in them and featured said monster on the poster, or like how some people think the shark in Jaws is called Jaws. So now that I have thoroughly explained why the monster isn't called Frankenstein, allow me to explain why the monster is called Frankenstein. Or at least explain why people should get off their high horses when someone does call the monster Frankenstein anyway. There are a few arguments as to why it's okay to call the monster Frankenstein. These relate to the themes presented throughout the novel. One of the key themes in the book is family and parenthood, and of 
course, one thing that links a parent with their offspring is a name. More often than not, children and parents have the same surname, and sometimes the same first name too, but that's a conversation for another time. While not quite father and son, Victor Frankenstein and the monster are creator and creation. So logically, Victor could have bestowed his surname onto his creature, could have the key words in that sentence however. While Victor never gave the creature his name, it's not a completely crazy leap for us to brand this monster with the surname of his creator, Frankenstein. Another idea doesn't so much link to Frankenstein specifically, but relates to how names work as a whole. I've talked about this in the past, and the simple facts of the matter is that we don't really have full control over what gets to be named what. Names only really work if enough people believe in them, and if enough people want to say that the monster is called Frankenstein, then the monster is called Frankenstein. Despite how many people might get angry about it and claim that it's not technically accurate, it's like how in The Mandalorian and all the official merchandise as sources, this character was referred to as the child, but everyone just calls him Baby Yoda instead. The final idea is much more GCSE English lit, for lack of a better term, and it relates not so much to the monster being called Frankenstein, but instead relates to calling Frankenstein the monster. While monster is first and foremost a noun we use for big, scary, more often than not fictional creatures, we can also use monster as a term to describe people. One of the OED's definition of monster is a person of repulsively unnatural character, or exhibiting such extreme cruelty or wickedness as to appear inhumane. At the start of this video, Video when I was listing monsters, I, kinda jokingly, included Factual, the likes of Dracula and Cthulhu. This is my example of using monster in this sense. Though feel free to insert any other politician you dislike, and you get the idea as to how to use monster in this way. So what makes the creator, Dr. Victor Frankenstein? a monster. Well it's time to finally shine a spotlight on the man himself. The classic idea from the Hollywood films is that Victor had good intentions and was well meaning in his creation. He even attempted to care for his creature before it all went wrong. He is seen as something of a sad figure, while the monster is seen as just that, a monster. In the book however things were a little bit different. Victor is seen as a pretty bad guy. First off he steals body parts and lies, and he is pretty narcissistic in his endeavour to create life from death. However one of the key ways in which he is seen as being evil is with taking science too far. This idea of going too far with science is another key theme in the book, and is perfectly encapsulated in the original novel subtitle slash alternative title, The Modern Prometheus. Though before we understand what makes Victor the modern Prometheus, who was the original Prometheus? He is a titan and god of fire from Greek mythology. There are two events how this god is best known for. First off he created humankind from the earth and mud. The humans were gifted fire too, but eventually Zeus took this from them. So second he stole fire back for them when Zeus had taken it away. As punishment for this, Zeus famously nailed Prometheus to a mountain and sent an eagle to continuously pick out and eat his immortal liver forever. While Victor's liver remained intact, these two stories relate to why Victor was dubbed the modern Prometheus. First off, because he created life, much like Prometheus did, and instead of stealing fire, he stole electricity. Electricity was key in reanimating the creature, and the novel was written at a time when people were fascinated by electricity, and some genuinely believed that it was possible to bring the living back to life with electricity. Actual experiments and shows for the public to watch were held where their bodies would be given huge jolts of electricity, and then the audience would watch in awe as they twitched. You must remember they didn't have YouTube or Netflix at the time. Victor harnessed electricity in a way nature slash god never intended him to, and his use of electricity parallels Prometheus's use of fire, and his creation of life, like Prometheus, was seen as somewhat disturbing the natural order of things that the gods had initially laid out. This all relates to the concept of taking science too far and disturbing the natural order of things. In the same way the gods never intended on Prometheus reclaiming fire for the humans, Victor's god never intended on him creating life in this manner, with his use of electricity. Victor was more than happy to play God however, he said on the matter, a new species would bless me as its creator and source, many happy and excellent natures would owe their being to me. However his creation turned out to be a physical, 
ugly, monstrous representation of his messing with the natural order of things and taking science too far. The monster was his punishment, his liver-eating eagle. This disregard of the natural order and his title of the modern Prometheus can be seen as the one reason as to why Victor himself could be called a monster. However, one other main reason why Victor Frankenstein could be called a monster is really just due to what an awful quote-unquote father he is to his own creation. As mentioned, one of the key themes in the book is family and parenthood. In this case specifically, what happens when you have no parents? As mentioned in the book, Victor immediately rejects his creation. Like the moment he comes to life, Victor is appalled by what he has done. It goes beyond this however, and Victor declares his creation his sworn enemy, and goes on to make sure the monster is killed by his own hands. If we can imagine that Victor is the father and the monster is his son, this really isn't a great way to treat your son. I'm sure you will agree. And yes, while the monster himself does do terrible things in the novel, like murder, it could be argued that the monster could have taken a different path in life if his father fig was more supportive. It's the classic nature versus nurture argument. And this of course all ties into Victor's naming of the monster or lack thereof. He doesn't even name his creation. Could you imagine creating something, anything, and not giving it a name? Most things we care for in life we give names, whether that be just a pet or even an inanimate object. Not giving your own living, breathing creation a name is a pretty dumb monstrous thing to do in my eyes. There's of course huge symbolic importance of not giving the creature a name. Critics have said that leaving the monster nameless reinforces Victor's idea as to what the monster is. It's his property, the product of his labor, a possession, definitely not a living being he should care for. The lack of a name also allows Victor to not get attached to it, so he doesn't feel bad for fleeing and wishing to kill it. Another idea I read is that Shelley doesn't name the monster, as without a name, the reader can focus more on his appearance and behaviour. Either way, whether it be through his disregard of the natural order and creating life in a way he shouldn't, or due to being a cruel, rejecting father to his creation that he kept nameless, I am sure you can understand why in one way, the monster really is called Frankenstein. Man, can you believe I only got a C in English literature? Work hard kids, it pays off. Thank you to all my patrons who support Name Explain on a monthly basis. Patreon is vital to Name Explain, and donating just $2 a month allows you to enjoy ad free videos and bonus patron exclusive content. It also allows you to help choose what names get explained in upcoming videos, and it gets your name here with all these awesome people. Thank you so much for all the support you guys give Name Explain. Hello all, thank you all so much for reaching the end of the video. Check out another video and subscribe to stay in the loop on all things Name Explain. You can find me on Twitter, I'm at NameExplainYT. On Instagram, I'm also NameExplainYT. And on Facebook, just search Name Explain. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. And once again, thank you all so much. Oh, and happy Halloween. Woo, spooky.